Okay. This meeting is being recorded. Okay. So we start the recording and today we will do an integral over an incomplete set of um, we will do an integral against an incomplete set of Grassmann numbers. So let me stop here. So what's going on with this? Okay, sorry, still some problems here. Okay. So, an integral against a, a, an incomplete set of Grassmann generators will be, um, we will distinguish two sets of, um, two sets of generators. All of them are Grassmann numbers also with each other. And T1 until they could, they could have different numbers, but I will just just discuss the equal matrix case. Okay, so now what happens if I consider an exponential function? It's moving again. Exponential function of, for example, P transpose A um, P uh, transpose. Then if I integrate this against P, we already got that this is the Pafian of A. Um, and now what we can consider is what happens if I integrate against P, but I have some quadratic form um, and I will call Q uh, Q will be a vector of P1 um, until P2L. And G1 dot 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 until G2L. So basically the collection of all. So now I can use this to consider some new uh, exponential function. And this is similar to integrating um, a Gaussian function, a partial partial integral, for example, r um, x um, x squared plus x y plus y squared maybe plus y and then dx. So that would be classical. Um, and this is the equivalent. So um, so that will be some function f of g. And that will be um, uh, that will be what we want to find. And for this, we will need sure complements. So oh, unfortunately, I need to switch the board. Hope this will work. No. OK, so I will scroll through the previous session. Okay. So, okay, we're almost there. So again, integrate against P, X of Q, which is the collection of, of all of those variables together. And that should be a function f of g. And to prepare how to do it, we need to realize that m might be a matrix of the form A, uh, some matrix C. And here we will actually put a matrix B, which, which will be symmetric, and just to, just to get started. And Schur's complement is a way of taking a matrix A, A, B, B, C and writing it as a factorization into upper and lower triangular matrices. Um, so here we will have A, and here we will have C minus B, A minus one, 
uh, a minus one b and here we will have zero and uh, one one zero uh, here a zero and now we need to think about which order to do so i think this one will be a minus one b and this one will be b a minus one okay the pen is not touching okay and the idea is that once we will start multiplying the the things will cancel so let's see um so first i will multiply those two together So these two together. Um, okay, so first one with identity, I get A. Um, then one with zero, I get a zero. Then A minus one B with A. Um, and I already see that this is not canceling correctly. So I need to erase there. And I will need to erase here. And so when I multiply it in, I should get A to, to drop out. And so this is the right choice. So now B A minus one um, uh, will give me B because we are multiplying them together. And here I retain what I had. So this is called the short complement. Okay, so now if I um, multiply it all together, let me just write it in here, a minus one b, we just want to see that, that, that this added sure factor is canceling. Mm. So I have a times one will give me a. Um, I have a minus one um, uh, b will give me b. So I have B identity will give me B. And now I will have B, I will have B times A minus one B plus this sure complement term times the identity. So I have plus C and then minus B, A minus one B. Okay. So this, this is equals to our matrix M as we wanted. So that's a correct transformation. Um, in general, you can consider this for non-symmetric matrices as well. But, um, but let's say we have those symmetric matrices like this for now. Um, ju just, just to make the sure complement a bit simpler. Right? Um, OK, so today I'm, I'm, I'm discussing um, partial integrals against only a subset of Grassmonts. And for this, we will be using short complement because it allows us to take a matrix which has some, some couplings and, and make it into a block diagonal matrix. And in previous sessions, we were saying that um, Grassmann algebras, which are maybe generated by some generators Q, um, is the same as applying a an invertible matrix to Q. So I could define Q tilde as a matrix multiplication of Q and G has to be invertible onto L. Yeah. So if I have this, I have the same Grassmann algebra and basically we will be using this matrix. So let's call this one Q. So this matrix Q, maybe I keep it so that we can see. If uh, I can define now Q tilde to be Q applied to Q. And, and because we have this decomposition that I have P and G, 
Um, so I will have this with a tilde. And then this is equals to applying this matrix 1a minus 1b, 1, 0. And the first observation that is important is that, uh, that this is already OK, this condition here, because the determinant of, of those upper triangle matrices are, um, are 1, and, and they form a group. So now we can apply this to P and G, the old generators of this double algebra. And we see that P tilde um, is P plus A minus 1B. And uh, not P, G tilde is exactly G. Okay. So that, that's basically almost all that I wanted to say for today, because that, that's, that's the way to discuss the um, partial uh, Grassmann integration. So let's consider the following problem that um, um, let me call X to be the operator, which Okay, we didn't define the, the inverse of the Bravi uh, dictionary, but if I go from an operator X, um, a linear operator on our Hilbert space, um, then let's call it X, G, and then some, um, some matrix A here, G. And later we will identify this as actually a Gaussian state if A has special properties. The same thing we can do with the, an operator A. Uh, y. So X, I, I'm trying to construct now like a simpler case for, for showing this partial integration. Um, no, so we, we will use C today, C, P. And what we can interpret this as um, is um, the fidelity of X and Y, if they would be pure states. And we were discussing the, uh, in the previous session that this was, would be an integral against P and G. The symbols, uh, the Bravi symbols of um, of each of the operators, and then this Bravi kernel here, P, T, G, uh, up to plus minus signs, but I'm assuming that I still didn't check exactly if that's the correct plus minus sign. So what this would be giving me is an integral G, an integral P of X. Then I'm collecting P and G together. So I will write Q. And now we need to write the correct matrix. So X goes to Y. Um, ah, so, okay. And here we will have identity, identity. And then we need some factors one half. So, so actually I will need to swap how to do it the fastest way. Um, so with Q uh, being equals <coughs> G and um, P. Okay, so let me multiply it out. So I have G, um, G, P, and probably if you want the transpositions here, uh, A, identity, identity, C, um, and there should be minus identity, G, P. So that's our quadratic form. I will call it some curly Q. And this quadratic form, if I multiply it out, I will have G, T, A, G. I will also have P, T, C, P. And then I will have um, 
G T P minus P T G. And by the asymmetry of Grassmann numbers, we will have twice this. So basically what we will need is um, to define this here with one half. So if we redefine those matrices with one half, it will, uh, it, it will work in the sense that we will have a factor one half in front of the whole thing. And if I multiply it out, G T A G plus one half P T C P plus we wanted P T G. So, so I put a minus here. G T P. That's just the convention. Okay, so let me recap. This is a convention. And all that we need is um, that the integrals are in, in a good order. So, um, so maybe here plus minus one. I might I might be missing plus minus one, but, but that's the point. Um, all right. Okay, okay. Um, Marek? I have a lot yeah. of noise in the background. Uh, I don't know who's, who's talking there, but it's we are, we are being amplified. OK, sorry, Alex. Thanks. Yeah, is it good? And that's so, perfect. Thank you. Um, OK. So may, maybe um, maybe I missed some of the sign, but I wanted to basically make this calculation to show that um, that those um, those factors here, once we have exponential functions, um, um, we can put them together to be one single joint Grassmann integral. Yeah. So we could say that this fidelity that we have here, fidelity of x and y, um, we could say that this is the Pathian of that matrix that we have here. And then the problem will be how to compute that matrix. Okay, so so question mark, what is this? And um, for this, the short complement will be useful. So we will do this today. Um, one thing that, uh, that I still wanted to point out is that I actually made the matrix B from above to be anti-symmetrical, I think. Um, or, or at least to, to have the minus sign there. And we need this minus sign here to fix uh, this when we are working with quadratic forms. So basically the matrices will have to be in some way anti-symmetrical. So this is maybe the first time this occurs. Um, but you see that if I wouldn't have this minus sign here, um, then this would cancel with this. So that, that's one point where, where this appears. Um, this will be more generally true. I think maybe I will add some calculation later. Um, but we see that this, this is all good. So we have this quadratic form, this quadratic form. Those two are appearing here. And then we have this Bravi kernel that we were working with before. This sign here, maybe I messed it up today. But in any case, um, you can put it here with an appropriate minus plus sign or plus minus sign here. And whatever the sign is, you can put it correctly here. So now there's a different way of computing the Pafian of this, this, um, uh, this computation here, because as I said, we can consider the, the um, new variables, um, Q, and then, uh, then we consider Q tilde. And this is the transformation by identity, identity zero. That wasn't helpful. Zero. Okay, that's a good zero. Um, a minus one B Q. And as I said, this is invertible, first of all. But second of all, the determinant of this one uh, is one, right? So um, 
So because of the identities on, on the edge, this already forces by Gaussian elimination, I think, to, to give that uh, a determinant equals to one. Which means that if I integrate against Q, our quadratic, okay, I wrote G, should be Q. Uh, our Gaussian exponential with A, today we have this notation A mi uh, minus one uh, uh, C, and then one half Q, Q, uh, Q like this. So, so Q transposed, this is a two, the whiteboard doesn't want a two, Q here. Um, and this is a Pafian here of, um, I will put a one half here because I still need a one half factor here because I was adding the one half ad hoc. Okay, so I can split this integral as an integral against P and an integral against G of X um of of this quadratic form here q transposed our matrix m q so now we will do a transformation okay so actually i should do the transformation first and given a transformation with determinant one we can actually shift uh, the variables and use the decomposition that I was doing before. So for free, I'm changing the integration. And now I'm putting in here this sure block that we computed explicitly. And we learn that B is on the left. Then I will have just A. Then I will have, um, I will have the matrix C. C minus B a minus one B, but now I think I have a plus because one of the B's is plus minus one. Um, okay, that's a big zero. Um, one uh, B A minus one. Zero, one, and if I want to be here, it will be anti-symmetric. So I'm guessing I will have to have a minus b there, and um, I have the q. Okay, so now I will split the integral. Uh, q. So first an integral t tilde as we were defining G tilde. And now I will have this incomplete integral here. So one half, so this together is Q tilde. So I will have G tilde T A G tilde plus uh, plus P tilde and this weird factor here with the inversion, A minus one B like this. Aha, and our B is actually the identity, right? That, uh, so, um, I might have some mistakes here, but that's roughly the idea of the calculation that we put this in. And um, this transition here is with that of the matrix, sure matrix Q is equal to one. So that's the important step. The, the rest is just my, maybe my mistakes here, the technical calculation. Okay, so now what we get is that we have two iterated Gaussian integrals. And um, and when we do both, then we have that we have the Pafian. Uh, 
this is the Paphian of the A matrix, one half A, and the Paphian of the C matrix plus B A minus one B. And for us, B is equals to identity. And um, A minus one um, for a pure state is um, for a pure state, A minus one is uh, minus M transposed or minus A transposed. Uh, no, minus A. Okay, okay. So, um, so um, condition, I will just give it a name, uh, pure Gaussian state. The motivation for this definition uh, will be done in the future, but um, uh, but pure Gaussian states have orthogonal quadratic forms. The kernels of the quadratic form are orthogonal. So pure Gaussian state is an operator X uh, on our Hilbert space H, such that omega G of X is, um, is equals to X of one half G T A G. And this A matrix is orthogonal. So if this A matrix is orthogonal and additionally A should be anti-symmetric, I think I need to add later some calculations for this. Um, then we get this computation here. So the, um, so the transpose is the inversion, but the transpose is minus the matrix. So we get this equation. So now I have the computation of the of fidelity of y and x, which is the Fafian of, I have some trouble with one half today, but if I would remove the one half, we would have just this and then Fafian C minus A. And now another fact um, that we can compute is that up to this factor one half, that is some trouble for me right now. This should be basically identity um, for an orthogonal matrix under those conditions. So I will just make a circle and just write that this becomes one under this condition. Um, but I'm missing some factors that you can look up. Basically, Bravi is stating this formula in, in, in the Lagrangian representation of fermionic linear optics. And something like this appears there. Okay. So. So f of x, y. f of x, y will be some constant. Uh, times Fafian of the difference between the two uh, candles of the Gaussian state. And that's our formula. So let's compare this with what we had before. Um, a simple evaluation of the Gaussian, um, we were asking about this. If I would just evaluate the fidelity using Bravi's formula, I would get this. But then the question is how to evaluate that in a better way. Ah, I should get a plus, I think. So somewhere I messed up and I think I should get a plus here. And then if I have one half here, then we see that if C is equals to A, then we get Fafian of one half two times A and A is already orthogonal and we would get um, fidelity equals one when the two quadratic forms are the same. 
but somehow I I'm shuffling the signs because I'm not exactly sure how um, how those definitions were working today. Um, so basically, basically I injected a plus here for the sure complement, and maybe I shouldn't have done this, but I thought that I also needed a minus one here. That's because I'm having this anti-symmetric form. So I should check it still. But uh, roughly, that's the idea. And um, the second thing is that Schur's complement works for any non-symmetric matrix. We have an anti-symmetric matrix. But, um, but then what we need is that on both sides, um, that, that basically, when we are transforming so my definitions are messed up right now because I need the following. Um, if I have an exponential of maybe one half Q and some matrix M Q, then I want to write the matrix M as maybe some capital Q, some lambda Q and transposition here. If I do this, there's the transposition here. I get Q, T, Q, capital, lambda, Q, capital, Q. So what I get is I get the exponential, one half Q tilde transposition, lambda, Q tilde. So, and, and I want, um, uh, Q to be one half um, B A minus one. No, B is on the other side. Uh, and then I know where, where the minus sign comes from. Minus one B zero identity. Sorry, like this. So now I can compute the transposition QT, assuming that A is anti-symmetric and, and B is symmetric, as I was saying. So identity, and now I will have BT, which is symmetric, and A minus 1, which remains anti-symmetric even after inversion, 0. And that will give me that um, minus sign that I was talking about, A minus one. So that's one one way where um, this appears because we get this equality because A will be always anti-symmetric for us in those Gaussian graphs minus the graphs. Okay. So anyway, there are some problems with the minuses, but I don't want to unless somebody sees the issues. But the idea is that we should expect that there will be a plus sign. I will make it red. So there should be a plus sign. And the plus sign we get because if we have two identi identical covariance matrices, then we have we want a Fafian of an orthogonal matrix, which will give us one. And this is how we will get the fidelity uh, the fidelity between those two states to be one, which is something that, that, that we would expect. Um, okay, but the point of today was to introduce how to play with the Schur's complement, seeing that those are in invertible matrices of this form. So and this is the key of today. And we see that, that we actually simplified um, the full integral because in, in the Bravi form, this is the identity. And so it becomes much simpler. So if I, if I didn't actually, if I didn't mess up this minus sign, I would have this minus sign. And I think everything would be okay. And the minus sign I should have had because short complement is anyway there. Yeah, so I think that's about it for today. So maybe let me show the, the formula. Basically, the fidelity will be a Pfaffian of the addition of those two covariance matrices. So I will write this again. 
partial of one half a plus c. That's the idea. And we see that this is a much simpler form. It's a very nonlinear function on the, the kernels of the quadratic forms, but it's um, much better than this because this is a complicated pattern and the other one is, is simpler in its meaning and we can understand that it's a correct result. Okay, I'm zooming in too much. Okay, we finish here.